Hello and welcome, or welcome back to Naropa City Zoo. I hope you are doing well, and uh, right off the bat, for anyone who has been following these in, um, I suppose, real time, kind of as well, has been watching them as they've been coming out, apologies for the delay on this one. Uh, a little bit longer in between the previous episode and this one than normal, but I, I mean, it's this is a hobby of mine and um, last couple of weeks uh other hobbies and responsibilities have just been taking some priority so um that's gonna happen but we are back on track now and um i have full intentions to kind of keep up with this a little bit better um for the next few episodes so what we are working on today is something that, I mean, admittedly, nobody asked for. <laughs> um, I've been getting a lot of really great suggestions from you guys lately, and um, this was not one of them. This was uh, a little something that I had in the plans from the very beginning. Um, but I've been getting such great suggestions um, lately, and I have so many great ideas for the back half of this zoo that um, I really felt like I, I just really wanted this sort of transitional um, area, I suppose, is kind of how I view it that's gonna, you know, it's just kind of a pretty, uh, you know, meant to be that very modern aesthetic, um, sort of like a, just like a water feature. I know we already have the, the aquatic habitats um, as a water feature, but I felt like this really tied in really well with that, um, kind of making it look like this was some sort of broken up river, um, maybe at some point, but I don't know. I, I wanted to add this in as that kind of last little transition before we get into um, some fun little, the last few habitats in uh, the back of the zoo here. So what this is, is um, you probably got from the title of this video and um, possibly the beginning clip, but we are making two habitats here, and that is a hip hippo, a hippo habitat, as well as a gharial habitat. So the reason that I picked the hippo and the gharial, I obviously wanted very aquatic animals, um, for this habitat because it is mostly water um, and I went through kind of the full list of possibilities and um, hippos I thought was cool because we can mix the uh, pygmy hippos with the regular hippos and that's just going to give us a bit more of a population they're also very big animals so this huge habitat makes a lot of sense for them I think and the gharials are because of all of the aquatic um, animals, all the like the crocodile, the caiman, um, all of those kind of things. The gharials live in the biggest uh, groups, so you can have, I believe, like seven males and seven females or something like that for gharials, um, and that was very appealing to me because, again, very large habitat. Um, it only looks good if it's filled with animals, <laughs> so um, I think that will work really well here. Um, but yeah, anyway, what I have been rambling over has been the setup of this entire habitat. So you can see here we are starting to work on the um, a building. So this is kind of a fun building. Um, I just found some <laughs> fun circular looking modern buildings um, on Pinterest and I found those really um, inspiring and I wanted to make something similar here. So this is like a floating little uh, system of three circular buildings, uh, which were super fun to make. The pathing here was obviously tricky and took a lot of um, kind of trial and error to get it uh, just how I wanted it, but it ended up working out in the end. There's not really much going on in these buildings, uh, mostly just viewing por like places for if the weather's not nice enough to be outside. Um, maybe a few food, uh, food and drink and amenities inside as well. But yeah, overall, these are gonna be just kind of cute little viewing platforms. Um, as well as that whole deck area um, that is currently in the wooden floor um, as well. It's just some nice viewing. The animals are going to be swimming right underneath you, right up to you um, along the path, and they cannot get up onto it because it is raised a little bit above the water. So that works out really well. Obviously, um, not the most realistic uh, situation here. Uh, hippos and gharials are both very dangerous animals. Um, but I don't know, with this game, I like bending the limits of reality a little bit. I don't know, I, I don't really enjoy making super realistic <laughs> zoos all that much. So I like that, you know, the idea of being able to stand on this platform and having a hippo or a gharial kind of like swim right up to the edge, um, the railing and 
uh, swim right underneath you and then up the other side, I think is, I don't know, I think it's just kind of cool. And I mean, the guests in this game actually always really appreciate being able to be inside of habitats that they're not supposed to be in. <laughs> That's always my favorite comment to see is like, oh, I can't believe I'm in the Gariel habitat or whatever it might be. Um, so I think it, it boosts um, how people feel about being inside of uh, the, ha the habitat as well, the viewing of it. So hopefully this one works out well. Um, I know sometimes the bigger ones, people are like, oh, I didn't get a good view of it if you're viewing it from some other angle, but I'm I'm not too concerned at this point. <laughs> well, uh, we do have a lot of work to do on guest happiness, which um, we might tackle next episode. But for now, um, cool concept. It's fine. We'll deal with the actual like in-game guest happiness afterwards. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the videos here or the buildings here um, to talk about some tricks making the round buildings. I mean, these ones are not perfect. You can kind of see um, it's pretty hard to get a round building perfect unless you have it um, to be a certain size and I wanted these ones to be my size <laughs> so I didn't mind the little bit of imperfections but I essentially just copy and pasted those two on the edges um, and you can see here how I'm building them it's just you build one side you build the other side um, rotate that as a building um, over and over and over again until you kind of get a circle and here I'm just kind of playing with it a bit more to make it match the path um, I don't even know if I, I don't even know if I end up keeping this or if I'm just like, eh, you know what? It doesn't have to match the path perfectly. Uh, one thing that I do not like, um, in here that, um, I actually have never really liked about the way that the paths work in the game is the fact that you have to have those curbs on paths that are raised. So since these are technically raised because they're above the water, you have to have those, those like curbs on the edges inside the buildings. And uh, it would be so much better if it was just flat because then you could totally hide the ground and it could kind of look like the guests could walk anywhere, even though their path is only, um, this is a bit smaller than the actual building, but either way, <laughs> not, the, not the worst problem to have. Uh, so this part over here is an underwater viewing area. And I got this idea as well from um, some inspiration photos of uh, kind of some cute modern like sitting areas that they like had put into lakes and stuff. Uh, this definitely did not, it's not what this turned out to be, um, but it gave me the idea that a viewing area here uh, would be really fun to have. So essentially uh, this gets covered up. Um, it's like kind of like walking into a little cave, but it's very obviously like artificially made. Um, and then it'll be very dark under there and you can see um, all of the animals kind of swimming around from right underneath, which is cool. And um, you'll see in the end that platform there also ends up being a bit of land space for our gharials, um, which I also think could be really cool. You like, I mean, obviously, you know, there would be a barrier um, blocking them from uh, accessing the people, but like you kind of like walk underneath where they're hanging out. Um, I don't know. I just I think that sounds kind of fun. Um, so at the back of the habitat here, um, I did realize that these uh, these uh, animals are going to need land space. <laughs> um, this is way more land space than they actually need, but I figured we need some land space for the keepers to come in and um, for the animals to eat and that kind of thing. So that's what that's all this is back here. I decided to just connect it to um, what we already had, the structure we already had, we already had here, <laughs> to try to integrate it a little bit more smoothly. Um, looks pretty boring until it looks better once we get some foliage in, but gives us a space to put some of their toys. Um, enrichment items, their feeders, some plants too, um, so they don't compl complain too much about plant space or plant coverage, I guess. <laughs> um, so we can actually have some plant coverage. Um, and then barriers. So obviously working with a habitat where you're kind of crossing underwater is going to be tricky, with the barriers. Uh, this first part is making the null barrier all the way around the outside. Um, has been perfectly, was fine. Um, and I also made it so that this little land area here um, could also be a place for, this is a land area for the hippos to come up. I don't know if they will actually use it, we'll have to see. I tried to put a couple enrichment items here in the end um, to encourage them to come up there, but uh, either way, the, um, that's kind of a, a nice little area. But where we're going into issues is here when we need to make the barrier go from the land into the water straight down the middle because we were splitting this habitat in two. Um, I, so this is the second time that I've been working with buildings and water, um, and pathways and water, and in the end they always kind of work out. Um, you can see right there, 
uh, that little trick that I did to get it to work on that end was probably just luck. Um, I kind of like moved it around a bunch to try to get a perfect spot. I could not figure out that on the other side. So I had to use a different technique on the other side. Um, you'll see here, essentially in the end, I had to tunnel under the ground, under the pathway um, to make a ramp up <laughs> and connect back uh, to the barrier. It, it looks really strange. So the problem here, obviously what you could do is get rid of the water, smooth out the edges more so they're not so sharp, um, and then connect it that way. Uh, that works. But if I got rid of the water at this point, I would have to get rid of all of the paths in order to bring the water back up to where it is. Because the way that I've been building this, and it's the exact same as the aquatic habitat, um, I tried to get the water as close to the path as possible. And the way to do that is to build the path on top of the water, not put the water underneath the path. <laughs> So obviously not the smartest way to do things and I'm sure there are like more strategic ways to do it but the way that I have found it makes the most sense is water first then path but then you cannot get rid of your water ever <laughs> so you are gonna see me uh, if you want to do this plan ahead just do your paths as the very last thing so you can manipulate your water and your land bef without having to change your paths I make that mistake every single time. You can uh, see here in the jump, I had to create this ramp um, because the animals can't get into the water. Uh, the hippos can't, the gharials can't get over that ledge. Um, so they now have ramps <laughs> to get into the water um, because I made the edges too sharp and could not be bothered to smooth them out. <laughs> so there's just a little tip for you. If you want to create something like this, um, any paths you have going over the water, have that be the very last thing that you build. Um, so that you can manipulate your land um, as much as possible in the meantime without having to redo too many things. Um, but yeah, I think the rest of this section is a lot of making sure that these guys can access everything, that they have enough shelter. Um, we're going to be getting their habitats decorated and um, getting the terrain and the foliage all proper. Um, I think by this point, yeah, by this point I'd figured out how to have it so that everybody could, the hippos could access the water. There was a lot of parts cut out um, while I was trying to figure out the best way to get the hippos to be able to access the water. Um, but by this point we had already figured that out and that is that nice little ramp. Um, it just needs to be totally connected to the ground on the other side. Uh, it cannot be floating, <laughs> but it's at a pretty steep angle and it still works. Um, so that ramp just goes all the way to the ground and I think that's, that seemed to work to let them um, access the water, although I haven't actually put it into play yet to watch them swim. Um, I'm hoping I'm not kicking myself after the fact. <laughs> um, turns out they can't swim or something, but I think it's fine. Uh, all of their requirements are met um, by the end of this, so hopefully that all works out well. Um, but I ended up, yeah, I think the rest of this is fairly straightforward. Um, obviously this is a long time lapse. Um, <laughs> There's a lot going on in this one, two habitats, they're big, but I do do a lot of the decorating off camera um, and we will go over that uh, with a tour of this place um, after the time lapse is over. But um, ultimately, I think these ones turned out pretty nice. Um, at first I was kind of, I was a little bit iffy about it just because it is so open and I was like, oh, is this just gonna kind of look, I don't know, boring? Like I know water features, I love the look of water features a lot of the time. But sometimes for some reason, um, the one, like when I build lakes and stuff in this game, they just look very plain and not really like a, like the point of this is that it's a viewpoint, <laughs> like it's a nice place to view, but I don't know if it's because I'm making them too big and not adding enough foliage or what it is. But in the end, I think I, I like how this one turned out. And I think especially once we start building into the back of the zoo and like this kind of gets enclosed um, in the rest of the zoo, it will uh, end up looking very good. Um, but yeah, there was a jump there as well where I had put the rocks all the way along the edges, which is an aesthetic that I really like. Um, we did the same thing in the aquatic habitats. I think it um, just makes it look a little bit, I mean, the rocks are obviously placed, like they're not meant to look super natural, but I think ultimately it does look a little bit more natural than um, just having a painted edge or just a, a plain edge. The last couple of minutes of this uh, time lapse here is doing the exact same thing for the Gariel habitat that we did for the hippo one there, uh, adding in the foliage 
on uh, this little land side here and adding a few enrichment items and you know the feeders and all of that um i will say that of all of a, like a lot of the animals that we have put in this zoo so far and that i've even worked with in the past uh the hippos and the gharials are both very not very picky when it comes to their foliage or <laughs> i mean maybe if it was like a very like land heavy habitat maybe it could have gotten to be too much foliage too quickly but i hate it when you make like a beautiful habitat with lots of beautiful plants and all of that and suddenly your animal's like oh i don't want any of this <laughs> the peafowl are very famous for that they like for some reason they make me want to make a very beautiful garden like habitat and then they want none of it <laughs> they want way less foliage get rid of all the trees uh, get rid of all the stuff but this one i did not have that issue with um they are very happy uh with everything that i had put in so um, I like how that turned out, but uh, this platform here, I just these are meant to be look kind of like planters. Um, I think they kind of look like that in the end, but essentially this is like obviously not a it's not ground, it's a deck of some sort um, built up here. So I thought it would be nice to just kind of add a few what look like planters um, into here so that the gharials, because they can come up here. Um, I did check and they have full reign of this area. Um, but so it kind of looks like maybe a bit of a garden space, um, a little bit of a play space or a, um, it's also very open and sunny. So like maybe a place for them to go and sunbathe, that kind of thing. But yeah, that is about all I did on the time lapse. So let's, uh, jump into the real time part and I will show you everything that I did off camera here as well. All right, and here is what we created today. So starting right up from uh, the top of the Oceania habitat here, uh, I figured we'd just kind of run down a little bit of a guest perspective view here um, and see what we've made. So on the nice morning light, you can see a bunch of shade. We've got our little pygmy hippo running down uh, the ramp there into the water, but uh, that is what uh, the whole thing looks like from over here, which I actually think is not too bad. Um, I think this maybe this land area could be a little bit more heavy with the foliage, but also I worry because the hippos have a hard time walking past foliage. We want them to be here. This is a really cool view, I think. Um, so up close uh, with them right there. That's so cute. I love them. Um, this is one of those new scratching trees. Uh, they work for the hippos. Uh, I didn't know that, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you can see kind of the patio over there and it looks like it's actually being used a ton already. Um, oh shoot, we're gonna need to, um, oh, I wanted to do this in play mode. So let me just really fix the, <laughs> fix the Jaguar habitat quickly, um, before we get in here because, uh, yeah, I want to be able to view this, um, in kind of real time mode and, um, not have our animals kill each other in the meantime. Um, so let's go back into uh, the Tejid Cam. So that's all this is. I think this is a trick that most people know already, but if you go in uh, Tejid Cam, uh, rename somebody, you can walk and this is like guest perspective height. Um, hold down shift to walk faster, or this is kind of the default, it's very slow. Um, but anyway, let's click play again so we can see them. But yeah, it's actually kind of nice. You can see the, the, um, the viewing platform over there, this building actually it looks awful from behind uh, maybe i will look into a way to decorate that better um <laughs> but yeah you can kind of see you know maybe you'd be able to see the hippos up close if they were swimming on the surface here um but either way i think it does look kind of like a nice um just a i don't know i think it's kind of a decent view you can kind of imagine the rest of the zoo is going to be built up back here so um it won't be backing up to just nothing um it looks like nobody's coming from this direction yet but i guess we'll see um, how well these paths get utilized over time. Um, I also need to keep an eye on, oops, that was a bit of lag there. Um, I also need to keep an eye on this just in case. I don't think our, any of our um, animals can escape at this point, but uh, keep an eye out anyway, since it's the first uh, time trying it out. And oh, this is a cool top view. You can actually see um, the hippo swimming uh, at the bottom of the water there, which is fun. Um, yeah, just kind of, <laughs> I don't know, just a pretty regular view. Uh, so this part down here, this little uh, cute little courtyard, I did off camera. So you can kind of imagine um, building up uh, this area a little bit more, um, thinking, I don't know, maybe shops here. We have shops everywhere, but also our guests are all hungry. 
and upset, so more shops is better. <laughs> um, but obviously this is also gonna be more zoo. So this is just kind of a, a nice little transitional courtyard. Um, this, the animals can't get up here, uh, but it kind of looks a little bit more like it seemed uh, less seamlessly, uh, more seamlessly integrated into the habitat here. Um, same with up here. So this is the little platform that gharials can go on. Um, and like, it looks like they're very close, but you're not actually gonna be able to access them. And this is the underwater viewing, which I think looks really cool so far. It doesn't look like the guests have figured it out. Um, but you can see the gharial swimming up there and you can see the hippo just like walking along the bottom <laughs> of the, uh, of the water down here. So, I mean, I think underground, maybe we'll decorate it a little bit better, uh, with some plants and stuff too, but um maybe we'll do that later uh, i did put the a chief beef a pip shop water and a lady blues down here to hopefully encourage guests to come down here uh, i think once they uh, come funnel over to this area a little bit more uh, they might come down here more oh look he's diving that's cool i also put um I put their little spray things there i think i put the yeah the feeder here uh, which the gharials will use the hippos don't use it so there is not one over there um, but yeah, I mean, this one's pretty straightforward. I'll probably need to put some, uh, viewing. Oh boy, somebody escaped. I'll probably need to put some, um, oh, it's a sun bear. That's okay. That's just a bug. Oh, uh, <laughs> some viewing, uh, educational, sorry. Education screens in here as well. And, uh, I will fix these roots coming out the bottom. Uh, maybe lower this down a bit or make the planters look a bit more obvious underneath or just use whatever I used over here because they're not really sticking out the bottom. Uh, but you know, there's always going to be little fixes as we, um, as we go, but yeah, look, it looks like there's a few more people showing up. Well, these are mostly staff. Um, but there's some people very upset over there. I don't, I think I need to put my bathrooms in. Um, I don't know why all of these are closed. Oh, maybe there's no power over here. Oh, there's just no vendor. Hmm. Okay. Well. I'll look at that off camera as well, or after we finish the tour, I suppose. <laughs> we don't look at it on camera, but after we finish the tour. Um, here are some more tired folks making the very long drudge walk uh, from over there to over here for whatever reason. Uh, it is kind of hard as you're building a zoo to like make it, make the pathways make sense, but also allow space for like growth later on. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not very good at that. Um, but here's just a cute little water feature um, as we're walking along here. Uh, same kind of thing as the other side, kind of imagine all of this will be filled um, once we get over there. So it's not just going to be kind of dead green space, but I tried to fill in like this area uh, just as some staff buildings behind it. So I brought over that um, modern waterfall feature um, there. And then this, I'm actually really glad that people are using this. I wasn't really sure. But I guess it makes sense. This one is our current, like, kind of most popular habitat. So they're going to come from over there and come straight to here. Um, we also have no vendors here. I need to figure out what's happening with my vendors. Um, so it looks like the ATM is nice. And these guys are running from somebody escaping, maybe? Uh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Now we start to see the issues. So I don't know how that's an escape. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this is pretty much the end of the tour. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> we cannot do these without having issues uh, in real time, can we? Um, but yeah, this, these buildings kind of look like from the inside. We've got some, uh, education screens, lights along the pathway, uh, lots of edu education screens along here and donation bins. Uh, these are our talk points. So this guy jumps between a hippo talk point, a pygmy hippo talk point, and a gharial talk point. Um, once whatever three quarters of the year um or once every third of a year <laughs> or so um every four months and yeah i think that pretty much covers it um i do think yeah i will kind of make it so the back of this building looks a little bit less crazy or less plain i suppose um but overall i think i am pretty happy with how this turned out you guys can let me know what you think maybe if you have any ideas for improvements but i think especially once this is enclosed in like the back half of the zoo being already done um i think it's going to kind of work really well here but uh, let's go through together and solve a few of these problems that we are seeing. Um, so it says that he has escaped, right? Because the, he's actually right now in the hippo habitat. Uh, Gariel, hippo. So that's a problem. Let's capture him. And let's grab someone else and see where the escape points are. Because I thought that I <laughs> already looked at this. 
Um, but maybe I missed something. So, habitat. Okay, I don't see any red right off the bat. Although I know sometimes it can be kind of hard to see. Um, this one here, it looks like they can't jump over the edge here. Um, looks like they can't get up to the pathways. So that's good. Looks like they can't even really get underneath the path. So that's okay. Um, and yeah, I don't see any escape points actually. Hmm. Oh, it's gonna be another problem, like the sun bear problem. I don't even remember if we talked about the sun bear problem in the last episode, or if that's been a problem that has developed since. <laughs> um, but this guy keeps on escaping um, because for some reason he can walk through this pane of glass. Uh, this is the sun bear habitat here. Uh, but they keep walking through this here pane of glass. I don't know why they can just walk through it. Um, obviously it's a little bit damaged, but I don't think... I'm pretty sure the mechanic has come and like fixed that before and I like I expanded this. I, I took the glass, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna put it all the way to the edge and it didn't help. Uh, so I think that's a bug. Um, I don't know, maybe we're seeing something similar over here. A little bit annoying. I don't know exactly how to fix it, but maybe I'll just have to watch and see where they're escaping. Obviously, he must have escaped like through here or something. But that, that fence seems... I mean, I don't know. Could he really squeeze through there? Maybe he could. I can see about raising it all the way to the... Um, as close as possible to the pathway. I don't know. But let's get him back in place. Um, we can also double check. I, I do want to double check the hippos just to make sure. Um, that they were also having, we're having disease issues. I don't know what that is. Um, if I need to start assigning more keepers <laughs> to like these habitats that are getting more crowded or if I just need to make those habitats less crowded. What are you all running from? <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> This game, it is a management game. I will give it that. We do a lot of management stuff here. How, how are they even gonna move that? Okay, whatever. Uh, what I wanted to do was take a look at my hippos. So I assume the small ones are gonna be able to escape easier than the bigger ones. Um, and yes, there is actually an escape point uh, right there, which makes sense. That is a very low uh, fence. Maybe the, well, no, that's not how the Gariel got there. Um, but besides that, can they escape anywhere? Doesn't look like it. They kind of, I brought this one out so they can only go up to here. They can't climb the rocks. Um, they can climb that one, but I guess they can't jump over that gap. If those are not the most, uh, <laughs> they don't have the most mobility out of everybody. Um, yeah, okay. I guess that's fine. Uh, I'll just raise, uh, I'll raise this guy up a little bit and hopefully... Oh, don't you dare run off there. <laughs> I can see him, he's beelining it for my uh, my too short barrier. Uh, something like that looks good, I think. There, now you can't do it, can you? Oh, he's gonna do it anyway. Oh no, you see him? You see him just run right through there? Like I didn't fix it. Okay, I did fix it. Emergency capture, there we go. Hopefully, uh, let's check on, let's check with this guy. I don't, I, I think that fixed the problem. I think that was just a bit of a, delay in the uh in the recalculation yeah that's fine <laughs> i can't believe that will <laughs> notice it and then he immediately just like runs out of here uh jeez but um yeah i wanted to see i haven't seen anybody any of the gariels come up here yet um i'm pretty sure they have access to that i guess i didn't really double check uh when we had them selected but yeah they have full reign um of that little platform so I guess they, I think they have to climb up on it and go over to get over here. So maybe we'll see him um, climb him up on it uh, on his way back to getting some food. But either way, we'll keep an eye on, um, we'll keep an eye on them and make sure that they are not escaping <laughs> in places that make no sense or that we have not missed any like escape points uh, somehow that is not showing. Um, but overall, I think think i think that's everything for this episode um we can go over actually maybe the uh, what we're doing for work zones and stuff that's something that i don't really talk about too much when we make a new uh when we make a new area but 
something that I actually always do when I make a new area is make a new um, work zone and stuff for that area. So you can look at this one. Um, I ended up making it this entire area, which is pretty big. Um, most of our other work zones are quite a bit smaller, but essentially I created this entire work zone. I hired two keepers, I think, a vet, a mechanic, and a caretaker, uh, all specifically for this area. Um, I think I do need to hire a bunch more vendors for this area because we are having um, we're having vendor issues and I did forget to hire additional vendors. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to hire one additional vendor for every single building <laughs> um, because I'm crazy and I really, oh that's a, um, I need to add, add this guy to the aquatic area. Um, but yeah, because I am crazy about it and I want like all of these to be um, covered all the time. People need to take breaks. I mean, staff rooms are way over here and way over here. Um, so that can be a problem sometimes. <laughs> and I think is why we keep on seeing like all the vendors quitting all at once, which is not good. So I'll hire a bunch more vendors um, after I end this part as well. Um, but yeah, I don't think I had anything else really to cover. Uh, let me know, of course, uh, what you thought about this habitat uh, in the comments and any suggestions that you have for improving it. And that is about all that we are going to have time for in today's episode. So as always, I love getting feedback from you guys. So let me know in the comment section below, uh, what can I do to make these videos better for you? What would you like to see in the zoo that it, we don't already have? I am planning on putting in a bunch of your suggestions into this back section of the zoo and I'm so excited about that as we go forward. So let me know in the comment section below and I will talk to you in the next episode.